All right, what is going on you beautiful humans? Today we're actually gonna be spending a little bit of time talking about a Thunderbolt 4 mini dock from Anchor that has an 85 watt charging and upstream port as well as three Thunderbolt 4 ports for that downstream that will also push an 8K monitor or two 4K monitors, but on that M1 not supporting that feature, I'll talk about that in a moment, but to also add here that it also has a USB 3.1 Gen 2 as well. Now, of course, as far as the dock is concerned, the only compatibility here, we are talking about Big Sur and Windows 10, which is kind of odd because um, for Mac OS on my other Intel, so I actually have uh, an Intel machine with Catalina. I tried it out, it actually wasn't recognized. However, it also is apparently not compatible with iPad OS, but I was able to plug it into my iPad uh, Air Gen 4 and it actually was recognized. So of course your mileage may vary, but I will also be testing this on the 2021 iPad Pro when it actually comes in. Now, of course, let me quickly mention the displays here when it comes to the M1, because you can do a few workarounds with that display link. And I know that there are some creators. I know that there are some videos out there where you can push multiple displays. However, let's actually just talk about out of the box. So when thinking about trying to push two displays via the USB uh, Thunderbolt ports on the hub on the M1, this actually just will not work properly. You won't be able to see the display as it should be displayed. Um, and this is actually one of the reasons why Thunderbolt 4 technically on the M1 isn't real Thunderbolt 4. Now, of course, you can push one display on the mini through the Thunderbolt port coming out of the mini or on the Thunderbolt of the dock itself, and then add another display via the HDMI out of the mini without any additional workarounds like that you, you don't need to do anything else. And yes, you can also add in sidecar for a third display with an iPad Air. This also translates the same way with the M1 MacBook Air, where you can have the MacBook Air's display, a the, the display behind me, as well as using sidecar on an iPad, so still three displays. Now, of course, getting into some of the testing, I have actually talked about the Thunderbolt retimers and the controllers um, it, themselves uh, in the M1 when the controller being on the die of the chip and the retimers being set up at the Thunderbolt ports to clean up that signal. So aside from the synthetic benchmarks, I did perform some additional testing um, that I often do anyway on this channel, and I did find some interesting results. So we'll actually start with the obvious testing uh, in those benchmarks, and we'll actually use a bit of that for some baseline, but there are some results that you may or may not find surprising. Data is gonna be flying everywhere, so definitely take some cover. All right, so here we go, getting my notes out here, and let's actually start with uh, working on two identical USB 4 slash Thunderbolt 4 uh, enclosures, the same ones from Acasus, as well as the Western Digital SN750 drives, exactly the same. Now plugged directly into the mini, we were getting uh, read and write speeds directly 3112 on the read and 1399 on the write. When we plugged it into the dock, doing the disk mark test, we got 3130 on the read and 1423 on the write. Slightly better, just slightly better um, on that right. And then flipping quickly over to the M1 MacBook Air, on the disk mark, direct connection, 3131 on the read and 1275 on the right. And of course, through the anchor, I was actually getting um, 3126 on the read and 1243 on the right. Now I did some additional testing with file transfers and we did a file transfer of 613 gigabytes of, of information, a folder, from an extreme SSD, so that is a 1050 um, on read and write, and then transferring that to the NVMe, that actually took 20 minutes and 10 seconds. Now, moving over to both NVMe enclosures, those USB 4, Thunderbolt 4 enclosures, same folder, transferring that uh, through the anchor, that was six minutes, 58 seconds. So pretty much almost a third of the time uh, when you're actually going to those types of enclosures. So just so that you have that. But let's actually get into some things that are really interesting because you know whether you're aware of this or not, these Thunderbolt ports need a little bit of push. That is something that is, is definitely what we're seeing here to try to fully saturate that, that throughput. And that's actually what I did. So compared um, to the previous read and write speeds, I maxed out these Thunderbolt ports. 
So what I did was transferring that same 600 gigabyte folder from an NVMe enclosure to the SanDisk Extreme, doesn't matter what you're, you're just trying to saturate that throughput. I went ahead and did another disk mark test, 2937 on the read and 1847 on the write. So all three ports were being maxed out basically at that time in the mini dock. And of course, adding in the MacBook Air here, doing a file transfer, doing saturating the, those ports through the anchor, 2914 on the read and 1793 on the write, which is about 500 better on that write. However, about a 200 drop on the read. Now, another test that I did flipping back over to the mini was plugged in from the anchor. So USB-C or Thunderbolt to that monitor behind me via USB-C and then having the drive plugged in as well, running that test or that benchmark, 3117 on the read, 1498 on the write, which is about 100 higher on that write than the previous baseline without anything but the drive plugged into the anchor. Now, of course, flipping back over to 4K editing, I've got another timeline, and these are this is actually where things are gonna get interesting, where we kind of talk a little bit more about real world. So this is a 4K timeline. It's compressed for H.264, YouTube, uh, the, the iPhone battery timeline that I did that I actually just launched that video. It was about a 10 minute timeline. The baseline info here is editing on the local drive, the internal of the mini, five minutes and 36 seconds. Now, here's another thing too. I got rid of all of the analysis files, the render files, all of that and started from scratch through the anchor, not maxed out with the USB-C monitor plugged in or anything like that, just the drive itself, seven minutes and 13 seconds, just in the anchor. Through the anchor with the NVMe and two displays, so I connected two displays, one USB-C to USB-C, so that monitor behind me, and then the other USB-C to display port on a 1080p monitor, but do keep in mind that that, that monitor, that the quality on that monitor, it was definitely pixelated, but I just wanted to push, uh, I wanted to try to not fully saturate, but at least push it through that port. And I got something interesting. I got a six minute and three second uh, export time on that. So about a whole minute better even though that that display, that whole setup was not supported, I was still able to push through uh, the anchor itself. Now through the anchor, maxed out with large file transfers, I know this is a lot of information, but transferring a very large folder between two drives, the NVMe and the Extreme SSD, I then tried to render that same timeline, I got five minutes and 38 seconds. I actually got two seconds slower by saturating as much as I could on this anchor um, and two seconds slower than if I were to just, just edit it on the internal. So as far as whether the dock fixes your M1, well, it, it's definitely you know, offering you more ports as far as you know, giving you more access. And of course, you being able to dock, whether it's your MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, or especially your Mac Mini. And as far as the performance being faster when maxing out those ports on the dock, I mean, the thing is here is that th there's a small handful of you out there that are likely running some RAID setups for editing or your, you know, for your work and trying to saturate that throughput. And that seems to actually give you that boost on that read and write. Because I always talk about the application itself, the software itself, you are also limited to how quickly that software can read and write. So that's just some things that I always throw out there. But obviously, as you saw, I saturated that throughput and I got pretty much the same as I would on the internal drive when I fully saturated uh, the, the mini dock here. And of course, yes, I actually did find some differences in my testing between the MacBook Air and the mini, but this really shouldn't heavily impact that real world performance that you're gonna be getting. Generally speaking, let's keep ourselves grounded here because for those of us that are editing or working off of maybe one or two of those ports on the dock and not fully saturating that throughput, you're still going to get really good performance and obviously those extra ports to connect your additional peripherals. These of course are my findings. I will continue to test as I always do. And of course, I will keep you apprised of any updates. Hit me up with those comments and questions below. Hit me up over there on Twitter. Go out there and do those things that matter. Keep rocking those faces. And until we meet again, I will catch you right back here.
on the next one.